Welcome to Eye in the Tigers News. I'm Joe Lapilo. Thanks for being with us for the news we've been watching for you. <laughs> President Donald Trump said that although he's looking ahead optimistically to a historic summit meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, he could still pull out if he feels it's, quote, not going to be fruitful, end quote. Trump said that CIA Director Mike Pompeo and Kim got along really well in their recent secret meeting, and he declared, we've never been in a position like this to address worldwide concerns over North Korea's nuclear weapons. But speaking alongside Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe on Wednesday after the Allies met at Trump's Florida resort, he made clear that he'd still be ready to pull the plug on what is being billed as an extraordinary meeting between the leaders of longtime adversaries. U.S. airline regulators have ordered inspections on engine fan blades like the one that snapped off a Southwest Airlines plane, leading to the death of a woman who was partially blown out a window. The Federal Aviation Administration's announcement late Wednesday comes nearly a year after the engine's manufacturer recommended the additional inspections, and a month after European regulators ordered their airlines to do the work. Pressure for the FAA to act grew after an engine on a Southwest plane blew apart on Tuesday, showering the aircraft with debris and shattering a window. A woman sitting next to the window was partially blown out and died of her injuries. The plane, which was headed from New York to Dallas, made an emergency landing in Philadelphia. Investigators said a blade that broke off mid-flight and triggered the fatal accident was showing signs of metal fatigue. Microscopic cracks that can splinter open under the kind of stress placed on their jetliners and their engines. California reached an agreement with the federal government that the state's National Guard troops will deploy to the border to focus on fighting transnational gangs as well as drug and gun smugglers, Governor Jerry Brown said. The announcement comes after a week of uncertainty in which President Donald Trump bashed the governor's insistence that troops avoid immigration-related work. Homeland Security Secretary Kristen Nielsen wrote on Twitter that final details were still being worked out, quote, but we are looking forward to the support, end quote. Brown said Wednesday he feels secured federal funding for terms similar to those outlined in last week's proposed contract. The Guard cannot handle custody duties for anyone accused of immigration violations, build border barriers, or have anything to do with immigration enforcement. In his first public comment since his wife's death, former President George H.W. Bush said Wednesday that he used to tease his spouse of 73 years that he had a complex about how much people liked her. That fact, he said, is buoyed by stories about Barbara Bush's warmth and wit following her death. Tributes have rolled in from around the world, from so former Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev to U.S. Navy commander who recalled Mrs. Bush handing out cookies to sailors on a battleship. Former President Bush's wife died Tuesday at their home in Houston, where he held her hand all day before she died at age 92. They had been married longer than any other presidential couple, 73 years. President Donald Trump said Wednesday that a porn actress is pulling a total con job by promoting an artist sketch of a man she says threatened her to keep silent about an alleged sexual encounter with Trump years ago. The sketch depicts a white male in his 30s or 40s and carries a description of him as lean but fit. Stormy Daniels, whose legal name is Stephanie Clifford, told ABC's The View on Tuesday that it's the man who menaced her and her young daughter and warned her in 2011 to stay quiet about a 2006 trice with Trump. Winners hold on us continues today and even tomorrow before we see some changes that look a little more like spring. Here's Ashley with the forecast. Early morning snow showers greeted us again this morning as winter weather persists. We stay in the 30s for the rest of our Thursday with clouds and showers. We start to see some gradual changes on Friday, even though temperatures remain well below normal. During the last part of Friday, drier weather moves into the area and slowly we begin to warm up. Saturday's highs will approach 50 with sunny skies and we should look for much the same weather on Sunday. The better weather continues early next week with seasonable high temperatures and there's data that suggests we could approach 70 on Tuesday next week. So we're getting there. If you can just hold on for another couple of days. That's the forecast. I'm Ashley. LeBron James was his dominant self last night as he led the Cavs to a series tying win. Here's Matt with sports. It was dire, requiring playoff dominance. LeBron James delivered. Taking matters into his own hands, James scored. 46 points and added 12 rebounds as the Cleveland Cavaliers bounced back from a poor performance in the series opener by holding off the Indiana Pacers 100-97 on Wednesday night to even their Eastern Conference playoff matchup at, at one game apiece. 
dazzling from the start. James scored the game's first 16 points and then had 29 points at halftime, ruling the floor as he done in, in so many previous postseasons. The Jazz even its series with the with the Thunder with a 102 to 95 win, while the Rockets took a two nothing series lead after rooting Minnesota. Six outs from getting swept at home, Washington. The New York Mets stunned their NL Eastern rivals with a nine-run rally instead. Ioannis Saspitas launched a grand slam for his second key hit of the eighth inning, capping a colossal outburst that, that propelled the Mets past the Nationals 11-5 on Wednesday night and prevented the three-game sweep. Todd Frazier tied it at four with a two-run single and a pitch hitter. Juan Lagares put New York ahead for the first time with a two-run double off, ineffective setup man. Ryan Madison, 0-2, who was the pitching for the third night in a row and four times in five games. Shut down by Tanner Rorick for seven innings, the first place Mets broke loose in the eighth and improved to 13-4 to with a stirring victory. The ladies lacrosse team hosts Bishop Ludden today with an opening face-off scheduled for five o'clock. That's a look at sports. I'm Matt. Have a great day. The junior prom guest forms are available in the assistant principal's office. And of course, we're heading to spring break next week. To kick off the week, student council will present the spring pep rally on Friday afternoon, beginning at 1. We'll stream the pep rally on our Ustream channel. The link can be found on the district's homepage. That's it for us this week. We're back after a week off. Thanks for being with us, and have a great break.